Welcome, join Kyle, John and David as they go through what's on the playlist. Find out what's everyone's favourite at Chicken Soup for the Soul Entertainment. We have a few segments to be honest. In and out points, no celebs and the gossip. Back in time where we talk about the big M's coming attractions, what the queue, quick checks, who'll be laughing? You abundantly. Welcome to Jewel Redundancy. Yes, welcome to Dora Dunsey, the only podcast where you can hear all latest in television and entertainment news with too many else with exactly the same opinions. I'm one of those hosts, David Allen, and another one is... John Berg, and a third one is... Kyle Bridger. I would say that I am the royal flush to John's straight flush to Dave's... You're going to have to fold, my man. How did I do with my no. poker face? My, my, my poker face, my poker face... <laughs> Yeah. Uh, all right. We are going to be talking about Poker Face. Not, not too. Even though it was set in a casino, not too much poker. We didn't get to really yeah. see the 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 big action at the end because some some people died along the way. So we had to figure that mm, out people. first. But yeah, we're going to be talking about the new. Not really a who done it or a how done it. Uh, it's a whole different kind of mystery yeah. in Poker Face, the Peacock series. Plus, we got a bunch of quick checks, a lot of Oscar movies to talk about and do quick checks on. But first, we have this this segment. And, and John, what is it? In and out points. This is in and out points. Let's start off with something we talked about initially back in June. It was in episode 389. And we discussed how Netflix was turning their Squid Game series into a reality series for 456 contestants to play for a $4.56 million cash prize. Nothing well, could go wrong. What could go wrong? Nothing could go Nothing. wrong. There's no reason for anything to go wrong. Well, would it surprise anything that some stuff has gone wrong? <laughs> uh, according to The Sun, uh, contestants felt unwell and experience frostbite after playing the game Red Light, Green Light, in which they have to remain motionless to win for hours. The show is currently shooting in the UK, and temperatures had dropped below freezing during the shoot. Um, the Sun also spoke to some players already eliminated from the show, and they said, quote, Some people couldn't move their feet because it was so cold. You could hear someone yell medic and the crew would rush on. We ended up standing there for 30 minutes between takes. So we got a lot to break down with this, but initial thoughts, John, uh, surprised. I mean, kind of surprised that like, you know, 2023 and we'd allow people to like do something like this, like the PR nightmare alone. Uh, you'd think someone on set would be like, all right, let's, let's bring hand warmers or at least something. But on the other hand, isn't that the whole point of Squid Games is to make people like demean themselves for money? Like I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised that Netflix would just say, ah, whatever, who cares? Like, yeah. uh, really? I see two sides to this because it's obviously a very complicated issue. Obviously, one, you could always say, well, hey, they signed up for a show called Squid Game. They know what they were getting themselves into. But at the same time, they also expect with a production like Netflix, like, yeah, we're not really going to be put in harm's way. Like when you sign up for you know, Survivor, of course, you sign your kind of life away, you know, anything could happen. But like, you know, it's, it's, it's still a TV production. There's a lot of lawyers on set. And I wonder if a show with 456 contestants, maybe that's too many contestants to really keep an eye on and make sure everyone's okay. I'm sure they weren't expecting bodily harm in any way. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, you watch, you watch the show and yeah, there, there's bodily harm, but like, this isn't a show, you know, I mean, it is a show, but you know what I mean? It's, it's real life filming for a show. So I, I, I think you would be reasonably okay. Assuming, and you know, read the contract before you sign it, uh, that you wouldn't be put in some, in some adverse, uh, conditions like this, but at least not for a very long, not prolonged amount of time to cause harm. You know, yeah. I, I gotta be honest. I don't feel bad for them at all. I mean, that's the Kyle what, I know and love. What did you like? What did you you knew what you were getting into when you signed up for it, right? It's, it was I based mean, on based on a show where people were shot. Yeah, I mean, but, so you got cold, cool, but you're going know, for four point five six million dollars. So I mean, yeah, and I know all the legalese, like, but 
Honestly, I'm more for this because if you're if you're silly enough to sign up for something like this, then yeah, I mean you should you should get what uh, what is coming to you, you know? Yeah, it's. I also feel like there's a little bit of like you kind of expect this kind of reporting that like any minor injury yeah. would make the news because of the context of the show. I mean, people all the time need medical attention on like Survivor or even Big Brother. Yeah. Like, but yeah, nobody hears but, about Big Brother because, well, it's just them sitting in the house. So it's like, okay, yeah, someone broke their leg. Okay, you know, that's happened. Like, that's happened in the house. But, like, mm-hmm. it's not news like this. But because it's a show that literally killed people in the fictional version, mm-hmm. like, of course, they're going to talk about any injury. And, and the injuries are, like, supposedly, okay, fewer than five players have required medics on the set. One contestant is believed to have injured their shoulder a- after accidentally running into a wall. Not, yeah. not sure how See, that happened. That, that sounds like normal, but like frostbite's yeah. not an accident. Yeah. Like you know well ahead of time, like, hey, something's yeah. wrong. You know, it, like that's that's where I would say I wouldn't expect that. Someone running into a wall and, and dislocating a shoulder, breaking an arm, tripping and, and scraping open a leg or something, that sounds appropriate for what's going on. You yeah. know, assuming it's some kind of game yeah. show with some physicality, but Frostbite's not a not an accident. It's not like oops, like <laughs> it just happened. Like especially you know. the thing I will go and give the contestants credit for is like they said, like we ended up standing there for thirty minutes between takes. It's like that's a whole other thing where it's like, yeah, okay, you're, you're playing thing. a game. Okay, stop, yeah. start, stop, start. But when it's a TV show, it's like, hang on, there's a medic. Okay, you're gonna have to all stay in place for thirty minutes, and then we can start over. Yeah. It's like that's 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 inhumane. Yeah, mark I your agree spot, with that. Move around, you know. Yeah, make yeah. sure the blood's flowing. Yeah. Um, Huddle up, whatever you got to do. But yeah, that kind of mm. that kind of sucks. Yeah. So Netflix and producers said, "quote While it was very cold on set, participants were prepared for that. Any claims of serious injury are untrue. We care deeply about the health and safety of our cast and crew, and invested in all the appropriate safety procedures." Now, I don't know for sure because obviously we're not we're not there. We're not seeing how they're filming it. I saw in the article, I believe that they're filming this like in an airplane hangar, so it's not like necessarily like outside outside. So it's like, I don't know what kind of heating well, situation you could have yeah. had maybe inside the hangar, at least set up in the case it got really, really cold. Like, but uh, that's a tough one. A big concrete yeah. metal building like that. Yeah. I don't think you're yeah. going to be able to yeah. keep heat inside. I mean, you'll keep the wind out, which is important, but yeah. um, I don't know. So, so you're saying that there are alleged frostbites then if, if they're denying serious injury? Like, I mean, I mean again, the, the reporting is from the sun. So uh, we got to take everything Fair. with a grain of salt. And, yeah. But and then, but then again, Netflix obviously has to do their legal mumbo jumbo as well. Mm. Um, I will say this is a slight, slight spoiler for anyone who wants to watch the reality Uh-oh. show, um, you know, completely unspoiled. But for round one, after starting with 456 contestants, we are believed to have gone down to 228. They, that, so we've already dropped down to 228 who made it through the first hurdle. So So I'm going to say the frostbite wasn't too bad, and yeah. this is a blown out of proportion. Or it so. took out half the contestants. Yeah, the yeah. frostbite. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't like, yeah, like, uh, at least five. It's like five or like 50, 500, like how many? Uh, but all right, that is everything going on with Squid Game. I'm sure when that actually ends up premiering, we'll we'll talk about that reality version of it. Let's talk about some awards. Two weeks ago, we discussed the SAG, the PGA, the DGA noms, and last week we went really in depth on the Oscar nominations. But finally, we have the final like main guild to discuss, and that's the Writers Guild. So the Writers Guild of America, they have uh, original and adapted screenplays, so we can talk about what made the cut there. And for original, we have Everything Everywhere All at Once, The Fablemans, The Menu, Nope, and Tar. And then for Adapted, we have Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery. She said Top Gun Maverick and Woman Talking. So any surprises you see, Kyle? Any big things? I got some differences, but... Well, any... yeah, there are quite a few differences I'm just noticing, right? Uh, I th- Nope is in there that I don't think was in the, uh, mm-hmm. uh, the other one. So that's getting some love here. The menu, um, well, right? the menu, yeah. the menu, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and I like the menu, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I still have to see the Fablemans, but yeah. um, you know, it is an int- interesting list, and 
You know, I always like some change-ups. It makes it feel uh, more interesting to me. So It's certainly going to make things harder for us when we end up predicting them later on uh, and not yeah. having the precursors there. But yeah, you mentioned some of the changes. There's really four differences from Tuesday's Oscar nominations. And this is actually uh, due to possibly eligibility because some of these movies are not eligible. So you have The Menu and Nope. They made it in at the WGA, not at the Oscars, but they made it in over films like Banshees of Inchirin and Triangle mm. of Sadness. So those mm. were nominated at the Oscars. They're not nominated here. They weren't eligible. And mm. then for Adapted Screenplay, Wakanda Forever, and she said they made it in over All Quiet on the Western Front and Living. Again, neither eligible. So you have some pretty big players like Banshees yeah. and All Quiet that just are not seen here because they just weren't eligible. So, yeah. So Yeah, that's... Uh, yeah. But it, it does, like, open up, you know, some ones like Nope. Like, probably Nope should have probably been in the maybe Oscar yeah. conversation just in general, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. for, you know, for to be completely shut out of the Oscars is is crazy. But at least it's getting some some love here. Same with, you know, The Menu and, uh, you know, some of the other movies we've talked about. But I really want to now go into kind of like where we stand with everything, everything all together. I, I took out some, uh, some Excel and I, I made a little graph here you can see on twitch and on youtube where we stand with the guilds and the oscars and the baftas and i just picked some of the main things at least i felt like were important so i have from left to right i have pretty much oh did it get a, a dga nom a sag nom an ensemble the wga nom the bafta best film nom the an oscar nom for best director an oscar nom for best screenplay and then also an oscar for best film editing because that's usually a big award and if you can kind of see with the colors there, green is if they got it, red, they, they weren't eligible to even get that award. But uh, mm. I think we've said for a while, yeah. it's between the Banshees and everything everywhere all at once. And yeah, and probably uh, the second tier is the yeah. Fablemans and yeah. Tar, it looks yeah. like. So yeah, it's going to be tough. But uh, I still think the the way that things are rolling, it's gonna, either going to be Banshees or everything everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, and for me, I think, like, I'm going to go on a slight limb. Yeah, and you said it's, like, Fablemans is, is a slightly lower tier. I will say, like, I think overall it's polling lower just in general. Because for a while it was those three. It was those three, mm. but, like, it had a poor BAFTA showing. It really just got mm. one nomination at the BAFTAs total. Like, that's it. And it, it wasn't even for best film. And then had no film editing Oscar nom, and that's usually a big precursor. You got to have that usually to win. Coda was uh, an exception to that rule. But if anything, looking at the nominations, I think Tar is actually looking better. Mm -hmm. uh, just because it got everything everywhere all at once got. It got everything Banshee's got, except for that SAG ensemble nomination. But I think you could argue it's not really on an ensemble yeah. film. It's that major performance by Kate Blanchett, and that was mm -hmm. nominated. Yeah. So it's got, you know, green across the board there. Meanwhile, yeah. though. Avatar The Way of Water. Uh, it's not looking good. Not looking good for Avatar. But I think it was just happy to get a Best Picture nom at this yeah, point. Yeah, probably at this point with the way it's, it's tracking is probably just happy to get get with what it did. Even though yeah. if we probably asked James Cameron, he'd be like, yeah. why? Mm -hmm. Why didn't I get more? Yeah, so I actually, I, I did forget to include one big award, John. It looks like we're cutting it off. Uh, we got mm. it in last night. Top Gun Maverick actually got the coveted Best Picture wow. Award at the AARP's <sighs> Movies for Grown Up Award. Yeah, baby. So the Movies for put Grown Ups the, Awards. Put those 80-year-olds in those 4D seats and woo! <laughs> AARP's dishing out awards. We got to talk about them. It's, the, the, it's right up there with DGA and the Oscars and Bath. Yep. So, all right. I will say, not that letterbox means anything, but I was like, oh, let me look at like user scores. And it's like, it's still at the top of the list. You know, it's, uh, it's the Banshees of, of Inchiran and Everything Everywhere. Like, those are still the two top films. Mm. And and then if you go like, okay, let me look at Rotten Tomatoes. And it's like, again, across the board, I feel like it's a good group of nominees mm -hmm. this year. Because, yeah. like, they're all they're all fresh, at least. They're all fresh movies. Last year, I think we certainly had lower ones. I think, like, Don't Look Up was even, like, rotten. Mm -hmm. But... You know, okay. They're mostly all 90s except for Avatar, Elvis, and what is that? Is that Triangle of Sadness? They're in the yeah. they're in the 70s. But yeah. All right. 
Yeah, I think it's a good. I think it's a good batch overall, and uh, what I've seen so far, I, I have enjoyed the film. So, yeah, it's been a good, a good batch. And and we'll we'll talk about a few of them later on in the podcast when we get to quick checks. But I have like, like one more like awards type in and out point, a little update from last week, because last week we talked about how Andrea Riseborough she got a surprise Best Actor nomination for the very small indie film To Leslie. It grossed only $27,000 at the box office. It was a very limited release schedule. And according to Puck News, Mary McCormick, who is the wife of the director of To Leslie, she reached out to members of the Academy's actors branch, begging them to see the little watched film and post it online about how they much they loved it. And days later, dozens of influential stars saying the, the film's praises with some tweets that we discussed, all saying the exact same thing. Mm. So, of course, may, you know, raise some suspicions, to say the least. Well, while not directly naming Andrea directly, the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences issued a statement on Friday acknowledging it is looking into the matter. Quote, it is it is the Academy's goal to ensure that the awards competition is conducted in a fair and ethical manner. And we are committed to ensuring an inclusive awards process. We are conducting a review of the campaign procedures around this year's nominees to ensure that no guidelines were violated and to inform us whether changes to the guidelines may be, to be, may be needed in a new era of social media and digital communication. Well, I mean... It's no secret that campaigning is happening yeah. all the time when it comes to these things. I think it's just so uh, silly the way it was done here because it's like at least switch it up, give them a couple of options, Use a templates synonym. to go yeah. with. But like when it's all the same thing, it's so it's so obvious and egregious. It's like what are we doing here? It's it's silly. Yeah. So. Uh, I have some of the like rules that they're kind of looking into and we can discuss some of the evidence they may have. Uh, they're looking into lobbying rules because, quote, contacting Academy members directly and in a manner outside the mm. scope of these rules to promote a film or achievement for an Academy Award consideration is expressly forbidden. And then there's also another rule about referencing other nominees. So, quote, ads, mailings, websites, social media, including Facebook and Twitter, or other forms of public communication by anyone directly associated with an eligible film attempting to cast a negative or derogatory light on a competing film will not be tolerated. In particular, any tactic that singles out the competition by name or title is expressly forbidden. And there's been some other posts, like, you know, in addition to all those tweets that we laughed at last week, there was a post from the film's official Instagram account that quoted Richard Roper's blurb from his like top 10 films of 2022 and it states quote as much as i admired blanchett's work in tar my favorite performance by a woman this year was delivered by the chameleon like andrea riseborough and director michael morris's series like so it's like uh oh Mm -hmm. like you took this line saying like yeah as much as tar is that and kate blanchett this one is the better performance and you use that on your official like Mm. you know instagram account that's not good. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then there's another one from Frances Fisher, uh, who's who's an actress. Um, when posting her vocal Riseboro post, uh, she tagged 20 members of the actors branch, like Cher, Glenn Close, Alec Baldwin, all these actors, and said in another post to my fellow actors in the Academy, Andrea Riseboro can secure an Oscar nomination if 218 out of the 1300 and uh, actors in the actors branch nominate her in first position for best actress. Seems to me that Viola, Michelle, Danielle, and Kate are a lock for their outstanding work. So it's like, oh, she complimented all these act Viola and Kate and all these people on their great work, but it's like, ah, don't worry about them. Put my person in first, and then that, like, uh... yeah. And, and also, uh, they weren't locks, unfortunately. <laughs> like, yeah. as we saw with the nominations, they weren't. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, this, I mean, this sounds like stuff that is probably going down, you know, behind closed doors and like saying, Hey, you will come work on this project or my project and I'll, and I'll help push whatever your way. But this is just so, you know, in the age of social media, yeah, they gotta, they gotta update their rules as to what is, yeah. you know, lobbying this, I- and all this stuff. 
I will say in 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 the film's defense, this Francis Francis Fisher review is tough because this person isn't really associated with the film. Mm-hmm. So this would be like just some other actor saying this stuff. So unless mm-hmm. they said specifically say this, like this is just somebody is saying this. So like at, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, if you worked on, I don't know, Avatar, The Way of Water, and you just started, actually not even that, if you were working on Avatar and you were talking about everything everywhere all at once and saying that was a better film than yeah. blank, you can't blame the everything everywhere all at once team because it's not their <laughs> fault. It was an avatar folk, you know, yeah. that said it. So like same with this, like this person's not involved with two Leslie. So you can't blame two Leslie for this one. Yeah. Yeah. So, Oh boy. They still got to figure a lot of stuff out though. It's very, uh, very fishy, all of it. And, uh, but yeah, going back to the original, like posting and all that with Twitter, it's like, can PR people, can we think of more than one way to say this if we're gonna make it this obvious it's just so bad but it's true it's a small film with a giant heart andrea risewell gives us just the performance of the year I'm, they're I'm all sure. incredible I'm what, sure. a gem. <laughs> what, but, a, uh, what a gem what a gem what a gem all right well that is it for our oscar coverage for now we're gonna have plenty more to say i am sure before the ceremony on March 12th on ABC. Hopefully, we're going to be joined in late February, early March for our annual Oscar predictions with with the good, the bad, and the watchable. And I will say, speaking of them, uh, it was just last week where we recorded a very special 90-minute special draft episode. So if you haven't lo- listened to it yet, it's in their feed. Check it out. We, we draft our most anticipated films from 2023. It was a fun time had by all. So check that out. All right, let's now move to what we're talking about tonight. The main show. In order to talk about it, send us back. We're back, baby. I think it was a good one, but I heard last week's episode and you were way off. I'll just oh, say that. Okay. Did you put it on the end? Is that <laughs> what see. you did here? Yeah. Someone's okay. clearly not listening to the show oh, yes. weekly. Okay. But we're talking about poker face the series premiere dead man's hand it dropped on peacock on january 26th and this is stylized as a case of the week uh series this murder mystery is from ryan johnson and stars natasha leone as charlie kale a casino worker on the run who entangles herself into several mysterious thefts of strangers along the way now each episode adapts kind of the how catch them format popularized by classic shows like columbo so it's an interesting thing. It's kind of like an anthology series. So you can pretty much watch one in, you know, I guess a kaleidoscope. You could do it in any order, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. But each one, it has its own mystery. It's not a who done it or how done it. It's pretty much, yeah. How do they, you know, like, I guess, how can she figure it out? How for, solve it? For, yeah, how solve it. Uh, John, what did you think of Poker Face? I enjoyed it. Um, I thought that the characters were all uh well suited for their roles um i mean i don't think we're breaking any new ground with anybody's character in these but like you know from an acting uh, perspective but they all played their parts pretty well um i was kind of surprised at how efficient the show was like it got all the points it needed to in the right order pretty rapid fire i mean it was an hour long so it wasn't a short show but i could easily see with a little movie fluff this being a full length movie potentially I mean you could extrapolate it out another half hour and have a 90 minute feature if you wanted to and and I think it would still work Um, but other than that yeah it was pretty good I I was interested in watching another one I didn't have time to but uh, you know it was good yeah, it does feel like a movie it has even like the title cards at the start and Mm -hmm. it's I mean, there's a lot of care put into this. And I think, yeah, each one of these, like these, it's like a black mirror. Each one could be its own little mini movie. Um, and they could probably expand it out and have a whole franchise. But no, we're getting it as a series. Kyle, what did you think of Poker Face? I thought it was good. Um, I definitely enjoyed uh, the performances. I love Adrian Brody. I thought he was really good. Um, uh, Natasha Leone does that 
I feel like that character. She, the same she character. does it, Natasha but, Leone as Natasha Leone. Yeah, yeah. but it, I mean, it works and it works within the show. Um, I had no idea what the show was like going in, so I was sitting there thinking, like, "Oh my gosh, how how are they going to do all this?" They're burning through so a lot. Yeah, they're <laughs> burning through everything. I was like, "How is this going to work?" But um, it seems like there will be some kind of through yeah. line there. Um, but it will be interesting to see. And based on the the cast that I saw on IMDb, it looks like they've got some heavy hitters. So it's not going to be like your Law and Order. Who's this person? It's going to be some you. like legit, legit people coming in, which I think is going to make it more worthwhile when we talk about like kind of like an episodic like this. So. Yeah, I definitely think I mean, a lot of it probably comes down to I mean, Ryan Johnson, obviously, he's the writer, director of this. He's a producer, of this creator. He He's it's the mind of him, you know, and mm-hmm. he does great murder mysteries, whether it's Knives Out or Glass Onion. This is his bread and butter. And so you got this, you know, Ryan Johnson stylized aspect of it but you also get the star power that he brings like mm. in a movie like knives out because it's like you a lot of people just probably just want to work with with johnson like it's just i want to be a part of this yeah. i want to be in this world but then also for most of them it's a one episode commitment so you could also get these big stars yeah i'll sign yeah. on for whatever yeah. a week and and make one episode and get a guest actor emmy or something like it's easy i'll do this um so yeah i think a lot of it comes down to that and you get all the like details that Ryan Johnson is like known for all the like little nuggets of like of a murder mystery. I mean, you know, we're going to spoil the first episode, but you know, kind of she figures it all out. And it's, it's funny because everything, as John said, was efficiently timed out and set up in this one hour where it wasn't like on the top, you know, like on the nose type stuff, but she figures it out with like a small mention early on about some like cloud photo dick pic issue. The dick cloud. Yeah. Yeah, and figured it out kind of like based off of this one little nugget throwaway line. And then we also see her, you know, watching this surveillance video where he walked, you know, the the, the abusive husband walked out of the casino, with, you know, with the metal detector not going off. It was the green light instead of the red light. Mm-hmm. So it's like little details like that, you know, goes, brings it to like the Columbo monologue at the end. Yeah. But um, yeah, uh, I will say... They, they did set this up really well, but I almost mm-hmm. thought it was just going to be like a more obvious thing because like there's a point when this uh, security breach at the casino is happening and she's like, oh, he has a gun on his leg and like she sees him like grab the gun. So it's like, oh, she saw him grab the gun. So yeah. she knows that. But like that doesn't really that's not really part of it. It was like the surveillance yeah. stuff that was more yeah. like she figured it out. That was yeah. It wasn't the smoking gun, I guess. But, yeah. But, they should have yeah. had her say, oh, the gun, and then duck behind a table or something, so she couldn't see, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, other than that, it was very... Everything was there, you just had to find... The, yeah, they put it together. Yeah. Uh, I will say, the the um, her character being able to tell if somebody is lying or not can make up for a lot of... Oh, yeah. A lot of uh, flaws. It's a magic the, power. The, the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But... But yeah, and, there, and this, these shows definitely have the comedy still. Like, I liked at the end when she mm-hmm. sends the, you know, the photo to the local police station. She's like, wait a minute. They could be like in cahoots with the casino. Let me add the FBI and CIA just to yeah. be sure. Mm-hmm. And then it was like, wait a minute. They also might be corrupt. So then she yeah. adds Oprah. And it's Oprah, just like, yeah. that was a funny, like, <laughs> these are the four people on this email chain. Yeah. But um, yeah, so it is an interesting setup because, Kyle, you mentioned that there is like this arc to it like you know unlike mm-hmm. most procedurals it seems like well there is a murder mystery of the week there's still going to be like this overarching arc with kind of adrian brody's dad character uh, who's the casino owner that she i guess um got you know uh, a slap on the wrist earlier on got some help and is every is okay until she financially ruins this casino and now is on the dad's hit list again yeah so yeah, and there's something on the with this high roller that comes in, and there's something on the the tape or something in the room. Something's going I think, on. I think they yeah. they teased that with the um the intro yeah. with the with the child pornography reports on yeah. the news. Yeah, yeah, and and so that kind of wraps it all together. I think as the yeah what she saw and and why she's trying to report it. So yes, yeah, yeah, and it's it also. 
a pro and a con of this show where obviously every week they have like a harder task to set up a whole new world and characters like mm. will you even care for these people like because you're not spending that much time with most of them but that's also a pro at the same time because it's like well if you don't like this mystery it's okay next week a new one's coming or you know the yeah. next episode has a whole new thing it's just like pretty much you just need to like natasha leone if you don't like natasha leone she's the only real through line in this so yeah that's the only returning character really at least it seems so far but um i guess like one little nitpick i want to or ask you guys i need more info on how she got out of a fourth story window uh i mean i saw her with the the fire extinguisher but am i supposed to believe that she used that as some kind of like jetpack expulsion <laughs> thing because she i don't know it was clear like she went through the stairwell it said four she went to a room she went out of a window and then she's like just seems walking around later i'm like wait a minute you you, you want to be limping you want to be i don't know a broken leg <laughs> like maybe there's like what a, happened a canopy here? you're like uh, you know uh yeah that's a the third floor extension you know like on yeah. or, or something i just i think i needed that shot i think i needed the explanation yeah. but or just seeing her zip around on a fire extinguisher yeah. jetpack that would just be a cool visual so float down to earth on her on her fire extinguisher yeah be like uh gravity all over again mm-hmm. so yeah any other thoughts on poker face you guys gonna keep going with it yeah i think so keep poking I at mean, it and see what we get yeah i might i might if i if check back in every now and again i don't know if it's at the top of my list i thought it was well done but i don't know if it's like enough to keep up with it weekly um that's yeah, okay we're... i think it's good i think it's worth checking out and if you're into the vibe for sure go with it um but i i might be in and out yeah because i'd say i definitely liked it and i would definitely watch more of it i just don't know if it it feels like like appointment tv just because of yeah. the nature of like mm-hmm. the mystery of the week sure there is like this overarching arc but like i don't know like there wasn't like a real you know oh, i gotta watch the next one right now because yeah. it's gonna be a whole new mystery it's gonna be a whole yeah. new thing yeah it's like it's almost feels like oh yeah you know, i gotta restart every week and it's just i kind of like the continuous like mm. you know the last of us you know okay started here yeah. ended here ended here started there started here ended there like yeah but all right so that is poker face uh you know we got we got some time tonight we could probably go a little bit more in depth on these quick checks but uh we'll still play the jingle anyways we should like slow it down one time to quick check somewhere uh, can i do it on the fly i don't know <laughs> yeah i don't, I don't no, it's all good let's start off with something if you if you are like me and you might have signed up for peacock to watch poker face there's another movie you can watch on poker face or on, on peacock they should call it whatever. <laughs> whatever it's called tar and it's an oscar nominated film it's up for six oscars including best picture it was just released on peacock even though it came out in theaters on october 7th and this one is set in the international world of classical music and the film centers on lydia tar played by kate blanchett who's widely considered one of the greatest living com- composer conductors and at the very first female director of the major German orchestra. So she's a big deal. She's an EGOT winner. Uh, The whole film is about Lydia Tarr, and obviously she is the subject of this. And I will say, it's a slow build. Uh, I went in knowing nothing about this, and it took a while for me to kind of get a feel for the movie. Like, what is going on? What are we supposed to take from this? And there are some very impressive, long one take moments like these scenes are like these long one takes and they all there's a couple that will pay off later specifically why they are long takes in the second half which i thought was very strong and i gotta be very vague with this because i feel like saying too much would give away really what the film has to say and what the film is about but um i just think it's it's about a very powerful person uh maybe you know uh Maybe either getting more powerful or less. Uh, I'll, leave, I'll leave it at that. It's either okay. one or the other. Um, but yeah, I, by the end, I really liked it. And it's one I'm like, I'm still thinking about after the fact. And like, there's a lot of details, a lot of background stuff that is like, oh, they're setting that up. And maybe on a second watch, you will re- see things differently. But I don't think this film, I think, will be 
not for everyone. I think there's going to be some people that are going to be turned off by how slow it is, especially at first, you know, you know, maybe to some maybe pretentious, but, um, I think there, there's, there is some stuff here and I think a lot of it comes down to Kate, Kate Blanchett. Uh, I mean, we've heard it all award season. Oh, she's, she's sweeping these awards. Is she really good? Yeah, she's really good. She's good at this. She's really good. So, uh, I could see it, you know? Uh, so I will say the description doesn't yeah. entice, yeah, like doesn't fuel me to want to watch it. I know a lot of people have been loving it. I but I got to check it out, but I'm just like, oh yeah. man. And it, it's a very like it's a very specific character where there's moments where it's like, oh, are you supposed to feel sympathy for her, or are you supposed to be kind of like angered by her? Like there's, mm. and, you know, and I think it, it, and I think that's what will depend on like the like the the viewer of this like and if you like the film like if you if you're turned off by certain things yeah you'll hate this film but if you are okay with other things you might like this so i think it's Mm. you're either gonna like it or not really care for it i think it's i don't think you'll just be like oh it's okay i think it's one or the other but we'll have to wait and see uh i liked it uh i think i gave it a four out of five on letterbox i might be you know depending on the day i could have maybe been talked into a a 4.5 maybe 4.25 (laughs) <laughs> can't do point. that yeah, you can't, can't do, do that. that can't do that but kyle you saw another oscar nominated movie i did a quick check on it back in episode 399 i believe but you're doing one tonight on elvis yeah elvis oh man oh man so the first half of this movie i just kept shaking my head because it was just it was everything uh, like everywhere I, in, all at once. I, I enjoy Baz Luhrmann, but it was like to the max. It was just so over the top. Um, and then that's where we get like the modern day pop culture music. And then in the second half of the movie, I really, really started to like it. I felt like it came back down to earth. It was actually rooted in something. Uh, we started to to get like some real emotion uh, in Elvis and and the pain that he was kind of going through and how uh, this colonel is a is a real jerk. Um, and so I think the second half of the movie for me saved it. Um, but it's like all the tropes that Boz Lerman was using in the beginning of the film just go away. So that's what they end up being is just like these one-off things, like the, these pop culture music doesn't even make an appearance in the second half of the movie, at least not that I re- recall. But um, yeah, I mean, I I definitely like the second half. Wasn't so into the over the top first half. Also, when it feels like, I mean, maybe this is what they were also going for is like Elvis is stealing stealing his music from you know yeah. black artists and all this stuff, and it's. It's just like, all right, let's celebrate that, I guess. Or maybe he's just making, bringing awareness to this. I don't know. But yeah. um, but still, Elvis got job, man. Got absolutely screwed. You feel yeah. horrible for him. And I'm glad that the movie in the second half definitely gets like rooted down in something. Otherwise, I feel like um, th- this could have just been a film that was just a waste. Especially with how good Austin Butler, I think, really is. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we we made our jokes last week about the the permanent voice that Austin Butler has from from his Elvis training, but yeah, I, he does really go all out in this performance, yeah. and even still, like as much as he can do that, it's like I, I, there was points still where it's like it's there's points where I'm like, okay, I see Elvis, and other points I don't, and it's because Elvis is such like a distinct character, a person, it's just very hard. To recreate someone like that and i i agree with you with a lot of it i think i remember from like my review was like my one of my issues was like the pace and how the story was told like there were some big yeah. moments that we like kind of just flew by like and yeah like, there just, was like, like five years i think he went and, by like, in one in one <laughs> yeah and like we like skated completely past i feel like the mom's death who was like a central mm-hmm. figure for the first third of the movie mm-hmm. like and it was just like oh nope no more not a character and I just remember, yeah, there was like some point where like it was like, oh, some seven picture movie deal. And then later he's in he's on NBC and everyone knows his name. But like but then they're like talking about like, well, everybody know his name tomorrow. It's like, wait, what? Like everything felt like it was out of order at points. 
Like yeah, this hasn't you, happened yet, but we just felt like it was a month. Like it was very. Well, it was a montage to show like how big of a star had he had become. But then in the next instance, he's a wash up. Yeah. And has been who's been doing these these crappy movies. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it was it, it was definitely segue to make to yeah, make it, it toward the end of his career when things were not going. Because yeah, I just remember it's like, yeah, he got oh, he got this movie deal. But then he's like. When he's on NBC, it's like, well, everybody will know his name tomorrow. It's like, well, yeah, they'll actually they'll know his name when those seven picture movies came out. And he did yeah. like it's like it was very just confusing, like just the whole pace and the montage and like what they decided. But that that's a Boz film. That's the cuts and the camera flips and the you know, the the star wipes, mm-hmm. I'm sure, that were, you know, probably in there. It's just it's 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 a lot. It's a lot. And obviously Tom Hanks does his house of gucci performance of whatever he was doing and yeah but all right um no, no dna was rewritten for tom hanks i don't think so i think he's he will be fine with the next movie doing a new voice <laughs> but all right uh, kyle you have a, another movie i think you saw on this one on netflix yes so i saw all quiet on the western front and let me tell you i love this movie God, is it brutal? Um, I mean, I, I, it makes you feel like I, it makes you feel a lot of things. But uh, the realism, as far as I can tell, with the trench warfare, everything that I I know about that, um, it just brings it to light. It's it's crazy, crazy, sad, brutal, gory, but. Um, I think in order to get across how terrible it is, I think it needs to be that gory so that you can see and uh, just the use of sound um, when the bombs are going off and and, uh, you're rooting for this, this main guy who just wants to get home with his like whole unit and his whole unit is perishing around him and he's just trying to make it to the end with this general that's you know is not realizing the the pain that he's inflicting on millions of soldiers is it's just very very sad um and it's uh yeah but it's a it's a it's it's a good one i really really liked it i give it five stars it was one of my favorites it was really really good Hmm. And um, the only thing I think that I can say that I didn't like about this was the music, but I think mm. it was done on purpose. The music has like these stingers that come out of nowhere and it's just like, boom, like that. And they just come out of nowhere. And that's really the only music that I can mm. remember in this uh, whole movie. And I think it's to okay, show Chris to, Nolan. Okay. Yeah. To bring in an effect, but it it kind of took me out at moments. So, how would you, I guess, compare? Because we've seen a lot of war films over the years, especially even just most recently, nineteen seventeen. I like uh, it more than nineteen seventeen. Mm, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I I have heard. I mean, obviously, you got so many Oscar and BAFTA nominations, but yeah, one thing I've heard is how brutal it is. Mm. But that's war, I guess. So I mean, I guess it's it's yeah. true to that. Is it true to that, or is it over, like? over like glorifying it no i think it's 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 true to that there's Mm. this there's this moment that really intense uh scene where it's this one-on-one um kind of battle between two guys and they're just trying to survive and it's a long lengthy scene and you see the transformation that goes into the character from just trying to survive to hatred to oh god what have i done to uh, i'm now going to try and save this guy and mm. it's all uh, with the performance but also just yeah i mean that th- this i think this book which the movie is based on was an anti-war book and i think this could be showing showing that showing the brutality and what these people faced and you know the disregard by officers and higher ups to to help out their soldiers is just 
it says a lot. It's it's a brutal it's a brutal and I think necessary way. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. All right, we're working our way through these Oscar nominated films. We've talked about a few throughout the the year in podcasts, but I'm sure we'll have plenty more to talk about once we see more leading up to the Oscars. I have something completely different, still on Netflix, but it's a reality show. Uh, it's an interesting one too. It's called Pressure Cooker. The entire thing dropped on January 6th on Netflix, and it follows 11 chefs who will cook and cohabitat or cohabit uh, with one another as they compete to become the ultimate chef's chef and win $100,000. So it's like a cooking show, like a top chef mixed in with the strategy of Big Brother. So obviously you had me a Big Brother. I'll check this out. Okay, let me check this out. I, I love my cooking shows. I like I love those as well. And it really is a mix of the two. And I think the hook in this to kind of explain it a little bit better is they judge each other's foods. So it's like, well, you know, they could vote out the best chef, so then they are the best chef, but it's like some people just want to beat the best. And then you also each round get paired up with someone, or maybe you do a team challenge. So if you keep these weak players around, you may get paired mm. up with them. And then if you lose, then you are up for elimination. So it's like, you know, so you have to kind of play the game. You know, you have to play the strategy, um, play to maybe a, a chef's strengths or, you know, to their palate. But then there's other times where it's like they, they brought in like um, the their family members and they didn't know who cooked what. So you got some family members like eviscerating like they're cooking uh, and then other ones like praising their competition and and so there's so they, they do change it up a little bit it's not always they're like judging each other's foods but it's you know whether it's their family or, or at the very end they have like these like critics come in but for the most part it's usually each other trying each other's foods and there's some really great casting choices I thought there were some villains there were some heroes there were some villains that like become heroes um, so I thought they really found some good people some good chefs good mix of people to be in this pressure cooker scenario. And um, I will say like my one con, I guess, would I wish there was like moments that could be a bit clearer with the rules of like what's going on. Cause like there'd be times where, I mean, I'm big brother. They do like the rules of a challenge and then immediately they cut to. So the object of this game is to, it's mm. like, they just explain it again for us idiots who like weren't paying attention. But I feel like with this, there's just times where they just don't say the rules. <laughs> And then I'm like, wait, I'm like, wait, who's judging this? Or wait, how are they judging? Oh, wait, what's the time frame on this? Or, you know, like, what's going to, like, they kind of do a challenge. It's like, oh, how are they deciding who goes home? Well, at this time, we're going to do it this way. It's like, oh, I wish I knew that at the beginning, but. They can't give you, like, a lower third or something? I, I, I guess. But no, I mean, it's just, like, the idea of, like, okay, how is this, like, like, what's the object of this? And, like, how are they going to decide the winner? Like, they might have said it, but, like. Well, what would happen if this happens? Like, I have all those questions because I'm a reality TV, like, nerd of like, well, wait, this could mean this could happen. But, mm. like, they don't explain it until it happens. But um, maybe on a second season, I'll, since I know the show a bit better, I could, because that's always the fun thing with these reality shows. Like, you can kind of play along with them and be like, oh, that was a terrible decision because they don't know that, like, next week there's going to be a team challenge or something. Mm -hmm. Now, this one year, I was kind of flying blind with them, but... Again, it's like a, I can't, I think it was only like eight episodes. It's an easy binge. There's some cliffhanger moments. If you feel like cooking shows, I mean, there's some like legit cooking. There's stuff and I've never even heard of. And it's like, oh, they're making some legit meals. Um, and uh, interesting challenge. There was like a challenge where it's like, okay, this challenge has, it's like mon monochromatic. So like it all had to be green or all had to be blue. Like each person chose a color and that was it. That was on the plate. And Oh man. Or like, well, these are. It's a five course meal and each, each, well, four of the courses have to be the four seasons. So it's like one has to represent oh spring, fall, God, summer, man. this, like, so they have cool challenges with that, but. I want to know how long they get for thinking time on this. Cause they yeah. immediately, they always have something like yeah. it needs to have a tire. Uh, you need to cook with this battery powered thing. And it's just like. Dude, I would need a day's planning. I They're like, like they, oh, yeah. I got oh. this dish that my grandma made back in the day. What? Well, they were a la mode, yes. Yeah, it's just, they always, like, on, like, guys' grocery games, it's like, okay, you have, like, 
30 minutes, you know, and like you have to cook and grocery shop and all this stuff. But on this one, it's like, okay, maybe you have like 45 minutes and, and like they're making like pasta from scratch and like yeah. doing all this stuff. And like, meanwhile, I can't even do like, I don't know, just like a box pasta in an hour. Like, I don't know how they can do it. You know, like I know John does the Hello Fresh, and they always I feel like say on the bottom prep time ten minutes, cooking yeah. time thirty minutes. It's like no you have way. to double both of That's those to even get close. It's always a lie. Either yeah. that, or you got to fly by the seat of your pants and like you know, while you're doing one thing, you're you're yeah. cutting you know tomatoes yeah. up whenever you have a few three seconds. Yeah. You know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's wild, but yeah. So that is Pressure Cooker. That it was a fun watch on Netflix. If you want to check it out. But oh man, that is actually it for this week. Uh, we kept it a, a, a tighter show this week. Uh, we got through a lot in a short amount of time because we're—I think we're ready for our vacation. We're going to be off next Monday, we're taking a week off, and we're going to be back though February thirteenth. That'll be the day after the Super Bowl. So we'll talk about some of the commercials and the the big movie trailers that will drop through it. Maybe the halftime show. There's a lot of pop culture when it comes to the Super Bowl, so we'll break it all down the day after can't wait for the new super mario trailer that they're gonna drop oh <laughs> you're right there's gonna be this is another thing i'll, I'll do because we got time tonight i'll do one of my pet peeves which i'm sure i'll repeat in two weeks there's gonna be a breaking bad trailer or like a not trailer a um a, a promo for like popcorners chips mm-hmm. okay i'm excited for the breaking bad return does he but stop showing me all chips. the teasers and the photos and the videos from it now I don't want to watch an ad now on social media. I want to watch the ad during the game and be excited. Oh my God, that's Walt and Jesse. No, nope, they got to do it now to get the clicks and the revenue. Yeah, and, um, it's all th- those days are all gone. You got to build a campaign now, man. It's just because now I have like less of a reason to watch the commercials. Oh, I'll just watch all the commercials the day before the game. I'm good. Yeah, we got to figure can... out what instance of. Uh... What, what familial member nut is coming out? Is it going to be hmm. father, baby, uncle, cousin? You, you never know. It's a new one every year. Well, here's my take. I think it's, I don't know if you saw the Maya Rudolph. Uh, she's the now spokesperson yeah. for M&M's. Yeah. The timing of this uh, change in spokesperson is is odd. It's, it's almost like it was two weeks before the Super Bowl. Mm. <laughs> I wonder what will happen you know if those saying. M&M candies are really gone forever. We'll never see them again. Yeah. It's only going to be Maya Rudolph for the rest of our lives. Interesting. Yeah. But enough of that. That's just a tease of what we're going to talk about in two weeks. You can find these episodes on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, the blog, doerdunsy.com, and of course, Twitch, twitch.tv slash doerdunsy. We are live Monday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern on Twitch. Check it out, out then in social media. Make sure you're following us on Twitter, on Instagram, and now our new TikTok channel. We're on TikTok oh. now. We're getting oh, some hits. Boy. Oh, We're getting some redo, hits. I gotta redo, you gotta redo all everything. the media, all the banners. Oh. All right. I think well, maybe this is my time to retire. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you're now a TikTok star, John. Oh, you are boy. all over TikTok. So yeah, check us out at Do or Done and See. Yeah. Send the check in the mail, please. Okay. Okay. Oh, got lost. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I gotta <laughs> thank both you guys for joining me tonight, talking about all these different shows and movies and just being there for me. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, John. Getting the show up on Apple Podcasts, on YouTube. Couldn't do it without you guys. Yep, yep. All right. Until next time, I'm David Allen. Uh, I'm Jumper. And I'm Cobbridger. And that's all we got for Do Redundancy. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>